All right, everybody, how's it going? It is Monday, March 18th, 2019, and we just finished with week six of the AAF, and um, there's going to be a different video uploaded with, like, the week six AAF reactions, uh, highlights, the scores and results video, so I won't talk about that here, so you can watch the other video. Uh, instead, we're going to focus on week seven. We got four more games to pick from. Um, hopefully, we can improve on week six. I went one and three, not very good at all, so... You know, you, you look at something like that, you're like, ooh, that's not a very good start to your pick em. You're 14 and 10, but it's sort of, it's whatever, you know. This is a hard league to pick. It's, you know, we've had some upsets. Um, we've had some wild games, but unless we have three wild upsets this week, I'm pretty sure I, I have a good shot of getting back over 500, breaking the bad picking streak, uh, the bad pick streak that I'm on. So let's jump into week seven AAF picks and hope to God that what I think comes true and I go 4 0. Um, week seven, AF Pick'em. We have our Saturday games on 323, 2019, just for a date. Uh, the first game will be uh, held in Georgia State Stadium, uh, Atlanta, Georgia, TNT, so that it'll be shown on TNT at two o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And it'll be the Atlanta Legends hosting the Orlando Apollos. And I mean, this is pretty much what you see on the screen is pretty much all I have to say about the game. P huge mismatch on paper. Uh, you have the best team in the East versus the worst team in, or one of the worst teams in the East at, at two and four. Um, the Legends looked pretty good for about two weeks, and they came back to reality after getting smacked around by the Commanders. Uh, the Apollos had suffered their first loss, so I imagine they're going to be seeking vengeance. They're going to be playing at a higher level, and they're absolutely, absolutely just going to crush lesser and just worse talent. Uh, no offense to the legends, like they're struggling to find an identity, get themselves put right, but they just got thro like mollywopped is the best word I can think of by the commanders. And when when you see something like that, you're like, yeah, that's that's what the, the, they're the four loss. They're they're they were more the three losses than the two wins that they had. You know what I mean? Like they were two and three going into that game before they got blown out. They're more the three losses than they were the two wins. So that's what we can say about the Legends. And the Apollos, of course, just a weird loss. The Hot Shots, very good team that was on a weird losing streak. They were eventually going to break it. Made sense that it was against the Apollos. It, I mean, honestly, if you really think about it, probably all should have picked the Apollos to lose that game. It seemed like a trap. So um, I like the Apollos to come back strong here after a loss. Um they're playing a weak team on the road that the road thing doesn't matter because of how bad the legends are in comparison. Uh, I think the legends, uh, Apollo's beat the legends 34 to 15, somewhere around that range. It's going to be a pretty big line when it opens up too, I'd imagine. Um, yeah, the legends win this game easily 34 to 15. Let's go ahead and jump to the second game. Um, another game that's really just not good. Like it's just not a close game at all. Uh, this game will be played at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas uh, on the NFL Network at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and it features the San Antonio Commanders hosting the Salt Lake Stallions. Uh, Commanders were projected to be really good this year, and they had that weird, they won their opening game, then looked bad for like two games in a row, like really bad, and then they won three, now they've won three in a row, and it's against teams like the Hot Shots. Uh, the Iron, sure, they beat up on the Legends, but that, that team was also on a two-game winning streak at that time. So they faced they faced three good teams, and they've been able to beat, or they faced two good teams, beat them, and then destroyed a team that was red hot. I like the Commanders at home coming against a team that has only beaten a team like in their first matchup one time. The Stallions have only beaten a team the first time they've played them once and that's the that and that was the worst team in the league the express so it's not very impressive the the stallions they're going to be on the road they've never won on the road two home wins against um like really far less far like just not good opponents so um i don't know i just uh this game seems to me like it's a pretty like obvious choice who's winning this one um I don't know. I just I don't see it being very close. Um, the Commanders have pulled ahead and shown that they're more of a dominant offensive team. The two losses were kind of like, eh, we're still struggling to find ourselves, dealing with weird injuries, dealing with trying to get our shit all put together. And it seems like they have the last couple games. Um, whereas the Stallions are just this weird team with no real identity, extremely inconsistent can never seem to get anything on offense if their defense is good. If their defense is bad, their offense is 
you know, just not able to do enough. It's just they're a four-loss team. Uh, commanders are at home. That's another advantage. I like the Commanders to win this game 31-16. to 16. Any other – if like if either the Legends or the Stallions win these games, they're both major upsets. So there's really not much to talk about. That you got a first two first place teams playing like last place te- one last place team and a third place team. Of course, the fucking first place teams are gonna win. There's not really much to like break down. You know, normally, I try to analyze these, but these are weird matchups. The Apollos are gonna roll the Legends, and the Commanders are gonna roll the Stallions. I think uh, Commanders win 31 to 16. So this is the this first game on Sunday uh, at 3:24 2019. This is the only good game of the weekend, in my opinion. Uh, it's the closest one because it's a very even matchup. It was very hard to figure out who was going to win. And it, this game will take place at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona on CBS Sports Network at 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And it, show, and it hosts the Arizona Hot Shots versus the San Diego Fleet. Both teams 3-3. Three and three. Um, Like I said, this is the hardest game to decide this week. Uh, very equal teams by the by the optics of it. Um, I think the fleet are slightly ahead because they have more net points. Uh, they have like 19 points in between their points uh, scored and points allowed, and the hot shots only have eight. So they're ahead of the hot shots in th- those regards. So I had to take that into consideration. Um, th- then that's because the fleet play a lot of very close games for whatever reason. It's like a weird thing they do. Um, and the hot shots just play in a lot of shootouts. So they, they have a bad defense, the hot shots. The fleet, they give about give up about 20 points, and they score about 20 points. And they have, they've shut some people down in some big blowouts, so they've had that. But most of the hot shot games are all like weird shootouts, so that's part of it. Um, San Diego has scored at least 20. Um, they've scored 20 points in five of their six games, so that's a big thing. Um uh, Arizona has slumped hard for three straight games, and then they'd come back and just upset the number one team in the in in the league. I think that momentum carries over at home. Uh, these teams are very equal. Like I've said, they they seem to have very good offenses, so so defenses that can get burned. Um, and I think that's really what it's going to come down to: what defense can make a stop. And uh, it seems like the Fleet's defense has let them down quite a bit, whereas the Hot Shots. I think in those three losses, their offense just disappeared. Like, um, they were dealing with injuries in a couple of them, and then everybody came back, and they just had a bad game against the uh, whoever they just lost to. But then they beat the then they beat the Apollos. Once everything's back and everything's clicking, they're all good again. They showed their real feathers and were able to beat the Apollos. To me, that shows that the hot shots. When they're playing teams, they can win and they can make stops. Whereas the Fleet have won against, you know, um, I think they beat the Iron. Um, I don't know what the Fleet's biggest victory was. It might have even been against like the Hot Shots. I don't, I can't recall. But when you upset the number one team in the league at Orlando, that's a very big win. That's a very dominating. Uh, confidence building, momentum building type of win. I think that carries over into home against San Diego, who just lost a very heartbreaking game to the Iron 32 to 29. Um, I think that kind of demotivates, makes you feel bad that one of the worst offensive teams in the league dropped 32 points on you, and that's something you got to look at. The Fleet's defense gave up 32 points to one of the worst offenses in the league in the Iron. So. When you look, when you think about that, you're like, all right, the Hot Shots have a good offense. What can they do? If it becomes a shootout, who do you trust? Um, 32-29, very high-scoring game. Fleet weren't able to win that game, which shows their offense has some limitations in a shootout, and their defense will give up points. For that reason, I think the Hot Shots actually win a similar score game, 30-27. to um, I think the Fleet, like I said, they're going to be on the road. They just lost that tough game. Um, the hot shots are coming off of a huge upset in which they actually made defensive stops fleets game. If they would have made one stop, they could have beat the iron, but they weren't able to who made the stops who got the wins last week. I'm going with the hot shots at home off a big win. Hot shots, 30 fleet, 27 tough game to call should be game of the week. And then this game is just another one of these weird one. That's a blowout. Um, the location will be Liberty Bowl, uh, Liberty Bowl Memorial Stadium in Memphis, Tennessee. It will be on the NFL Network at eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time. 
and it pits the Memphis Express versus the Birmingham Iron. Um, I actually wrote, this game le needs little to no explanation. Express won't have Johnny Football available this game, I think, so they stand no real shot. Iron won 26 nothing first meeting. Uh, looked good getting back on winning track in a close game. That's the Iron. They beat the uh, Fleet in a very close, fun game to watch. 32-29. Uh, to 29. Their offense woke up, came to life. So that's a good sign for the Iron, who have a great defense, but the complaints been no offense. I was a little premature to call them overrated, uh, but that, it is what it is. Um, this seems like a really easy one. The Express stink. They're one and five. The Iron are four and two. Have dominated this team before. Johnny Manziel won't be there for the Express quite yet. Twenty-four twenty Iron win, and I'm being generous to the Express for some reason because I like them. So. Like I said, only one game has any real explanation this week, and that's because all these other games are pretty set in stone. I mean, Iron vs. Express, you're going to take the Iron just like everybody else, 24-20. Um, let's go over our scores really quick. And like these other two, Le Apollos vs. Legends, of course Apollos. Commander Stallions, of course Commanders. But And that's exactly how I picked. Uh, Apollos, 34. Legends, 15. I have the Apollos winning, 34-15. Uh, Commanders 31, uh, Stallions 16. I have the Commanders winning 31 to 16 over the Stallions. Uh, in the next game, I have the uh, Hot Shots 30, San Diego Fleet 27. I have the Hot Shots winning 30 to 27 over the Fleet. Uh, then the final game, of course, is the Express 20, Iron uh, 24. I have the Iron winning 24 to 20 over the Express. So those are the scores. Hopefully, I do better than I did last week going 1-3. and three. My weekly standings are, not mine, the league's weekly standings are as follows. Uh, number one is Orlando at, uh, or the Apollos are 5-1, and one, Iron are 4-2, and two, Legends are 2-4, and four, and the Express, worst team in the league, 1-5. and five. And then in the West Division, we have um, the Commanders out in first place all by themselves at 4-2. and two. The Fleet are ahead of the Hot Shots. Uh, at three and three because they have 19 net points. The uh, Hot Shots have eight, and then the Salt Lake Stallions are the worst team in the West at two and four. <clears throat> Let me get a drink here real fast. All right, Week Seven Power Rankings. Um, Memphis Express, of course, they will take over the number eight spot, down one spot from seven. That means the Salt Lake Stallions, um, because they beat them. They go up and take their spot. They go up one spot to number seven. Number eight, the, or number six, will be the Atlanta Legends. No change. Just nowhere really. I might have moved them to six, but eh, whatever. Uh, San Diego Fleet, they go down two spots after their loss, and because of other act because of other wins by other teams, they drop down two spots. Sorry, San Diego. It's a tough life. Uh, number four is Arizona after upsetting the number one team in the league. I have no choice but to at least move them up one spot, and they and they finally break that three-game losing streak. And San Diego lost, so I couldn't put them ahead of them. Uh, the Iron go up one spot after getting back on the winning track and just dominating, or not dominating, they just beat the Fleet, and they won, so de generally they'll go up. They're 4-2. and two. And then at the top, we have no change with either team. Even though the Apollos did lose, I still think they're ahead of everybody else unless they lose again. And then we can maybe talk about maybe the 5-2 and two Commanders take the number one spot from the 5-2 and two Apollos. We never know. This is my power rankings. I hope you like them. If not, oh well, <laughs> make your own. I don't care. Um, and then here's my AAF pick em record. Um, week 1, 3-1. and one. Started good. Week 2, I was like, oh shit, I'm a Swami. Um, like the Swami of uh, picking AAF games. Week uh, week three through five, I went shit. I'm very average at this. And then week six, uh, -oh, one and three. Uh, -oh, I'm not doing so hot. Fourteen and ten overall record, which is not good at all. But I mean, I could be eighteen and ten after this week if everything goes right. But anyway, that is the end of the AAF picks. Um, uh, power rankings and uh, standings and records and all that fun stuff that I did in the video. Excuse me. But anyway. Um, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new here, those two things help grow the channel and help me out. Uh, leave a comment down below with what you think of my picks, what your personal picks are, I'll be sure to get to back to your comment. As you can tell, I'm very, uh, I'm very good at commenting back to everything you have to say, whether it's positive or negative or just a silly statement I'll laugh at. I'll be sure to get back to you in some sort of a way. 
Um, if you leave, if you take the time out of your day to comment, I could take the time out of mine to reply. So anyway, uh, like I said, like, uh, like subscribe, comment, all that stuff helps grow it. Uh, reading, reading the script I write in my head. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, can't wait for the NFL to come back. Um, I'll be filling out a March Madness bracket, so look out for that. It'll be on the channel here this afternoon. It'll be a, like a live stream, so hope you enjoy that. Um, yeah, so th that's my Week 7 AAF Picks video. Let me know who you got down below this week. Let me know how your personal pick em record is doing. I'm 14-10. and 10. How about you? Have a good one. Peace. Go Patriots.